All right, gang, let's talk about Cabaret now. Cabaret is a fantastic show. It is um, a landmark in Broadway. It's a lot of these shows we're talking about, but this one especially. Um, but I feel I have to say this up front. Uh, we got to talk about some uncomfortable things here to understand the full impact of this show. Okay. Um, so I want to put that up there at front. So we're going to talk about some things that may be, I don't want to say controversial, but um, might be uncomfortable. So I want to put that out there. You need to know that going in, but you also got to understand why this show was and is so important, and especially why it was so controversial in its time. And in a way, still is. They still they've they've zhuzhed it up a bit in previous, uh, I'm sorry, in past years, and have uh, put it back out there. So it's still pushing the boundaries. Uh, so everybody, be aware of that. Let's stay frosty. So cabaret uh, music by a gentleman by the name of Joe Cantor. Lyrics by Fred Ebb and produced by our old buddy Hal Prince. Hal Prince. Um, was one of the primary creative forces behind uh, behind this show. And he says that where his inspiration for this came from is a spread, and I believe it was Time Magazine, that showed these skinheads scowling at this poor black girl. And what that got him thinking of was, of course, the Holocaust, which was not that far removed from having happened. And he began thinking, what would happen? How would that get started? How would something like that happen? And how how do you get in front of it? So that became the seed that became Cabaret. Cabaret uh, takes place in 1931 Berlin, just as the Nazis are starting to rise to power. And the majority of the play takes place in a nightclub, a nightclub called the Kit Cat Club. Kit, K-I-T, Cat, K-A-T, Club, K-L-U-B. Get it? Think about it for a second if you don't. Um, the musical is divided basically into two portions. You have a straight play going on with the characters interacting and then a song will happen that comments on the scene that just went before it. So a lot of times you don't necessarily have the character bursting into song as you would in a normal musical. It's here's the here's the scene and here's what we think about it. Again, we're seeing the seeds being planted for the concept musical which is going to come along. This is very close to being a concept musical but not. It's staged in a very, very different way. Okay? Um, likewise, Hal Prince's staging of it, the set design of it, remember I talked about that when I was first introducing Hal Prince, was incredibly unique. So, um, the set for this was accompanied by this huge mirror that kind of hung at an angle over the audience. So when you're sitting in the audience, you could see yourself reflected onto the onto the stage. So it looked like there were all these people in the club. Well, that sounds like a fun little thing, doesn't it? That sounds like a fun uh, thing. Oh, look, you're part of the show. I know uh, recent productions have actually sold seats on the stage so people can come and be part of the show. That sounds like fun. Yay! Yeah, that's not why he did that. <laughs> um, working at the core of all of this is the concept from Hal Prince that the way hate is spread and the way it gets started and the way it takes roots is it starts with a joke. It starts with a harmless little joke that everyone laughs at and ha 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 and the one person who goes, oh, that's not funny, everybody goes, oh, come on, it's just a joke. And then once it's planted, once that person or group of people have been set up as the joke, 
that takes root and then nastiness blossoms out of it. Okay. And this was seen in probably the most controversial song in the show. I'm going to describe this as where I'm putting that warning up. Be aware of this. Okay. Um, so in the middle of the show, our uh, nameless MC, who's kind of the narrator, uh, comes out and he does this wonderful comedy song with a person in a gorilla suit. All right. Um, and they're doing all these funny things. The grill has a tutu and it's got makeup on and they're dancing around. And he's singing these songs about, oh, everybody thinks we're such a weird couple, but oh, ho, ho. You know, if they could see her through my eyes, if they could see you through my eyes, they'd understand. And everyone's laughing because it's a funny number. It's a really catchy song. It really is. I really like the song. It's really, it gets in your head. It's very, very funny. So it's going along, going along, and the audience is laughing, and they can see themselves on stage like they're part of the show. Ho, 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 ho. Until it gets to that last lyric. And the last lyric goes as such. I understand your objections. I grant you the problem's not small. But if you could see her through my eyes, she wouldn't look Jewish at all. That's exactly what the music does. And everyone in that audience went. And what's worse, they saw themselves up on the up on the mirrors. And how Prince did that deliberately, basically to say, you're part of the problem. You were laughing at that. You thought it was all fun and games. You thought it was funny. Well, guess who else was laughing at it at the time? That number and that line caused a huge controversy. Keep in mind, Hal Prince is Jewish. Most of the guys working on the show were Jewish. Um, so it was not, as, as many people kind of misinterpreted, it was not, uh, you know, a hate uh, done uh, out of hate. It was, well, I guess in a way it kind of was done out of anger, but it was again there to say, you laughed, you thought it was all funny, but guess what? It wasn't. <laughs>